SF90 is Ferrari's new age halo car that doesn't have a V12 in it. And it's also the Scuderia's first ever plug-in hybrid. Did I mention that this is Ferrari? It builds on the foundations laid out by the legendary La Ferrari, which had minor electrification. But believe me when I say that the SF90 is a major step for Ferrari and goes against a lot of what they've done and said in the past. Now this electric pony is a testament to what happens when a company gets with the times. So today we're going to break down the SF90 first by looking at the electric side of things. It's hybrid drivetrain and then we're going to dive into the good old carbon dioxide producing the Stradale's twin turbo V8 engine. This is the first Ferrari that's more Prius than Ferrari and surprisingly that is a good thing. Ferrari is a company full of contradictions. They cash in on their racing heritage and pedigree when marketing and selling road cars, and yet they haven't won a Formula One championship in close to 15 years. That's right, what are they doing? They make grand statements like, Ferrari will never race in esports, and then just two years later, Charles Leclerc is off winning e-races. In 2010, Ferrari chairman Luca de Montezemelo nailed it, said the company would never make an electric car. And now we have a plug-in hybrid Ferrari as their halo car. Now, if you don't know what a halo car is, it's a manufacturer's light up sign. It's them shouting, hey, hey, this is what we're about now. Thought we were off resting on our laurels? Well, we weren't, we're doing cool shit over here. Yes, it's designed to make you drool, but it's also the brand showing the world that it's putting their best foot forward. It shows the people the future goals and direction of the company. So is electric the future of Ferrari? Well, let's look at the SF90's hybrid system to find out. This is Ferrari's first ever plug-in hybrid. It's only their second car to feature electrically produced horsepower after the LaFerrari. Now the fundamentals of a hybrid powertrain are pretty much the same, whether you're talking about a Ferrari or a Prius. You guys probably know the drill. The idea is that in addition to an internal combustion engine, one or more electric motors offer additional horsepower. Now these electric motors are powered by a mixture of electricity from a plug-in source and by electricity the system is able to harvest from the combustion engine via methods such as regenerative braking. I'm gonna call regenerative braking regen braking because I can't say regenerative more than once in a, <laughs> in a minute without messing up. So we're gonna call it regen braking. So when I say regen braking, it means regenerative braking, see? Up. A regen braking is when you take kinetic energy from your moving car and you store it as potential energy in the form of electricity and a battery for later years. When you go to step on the brakes, right? The car's electric motors then get put in reverse, causing the electric motors to run backwards, slowing the car down and turning your kinetic energy of the moving car into electrical potential energy that you can use later on. Let's look at a Prius for example. It uses a 1.8 liter four cylinder gas engine as well as a dual motor system powered by an 8.8 .8 kilowatt hour battery. And the power is generated by either plugging it in like that, or like we just mentioned, regenerative braking, also known as regen braking if you can't say it. With the SF90 Stradale, it uses not one, not two, but three electric motors. One electric motor powers each of the front wheels, which also allows for torque vectoring. Now torque vectoring is actually pretty cool. Typically, you have a differential that transfers the torque of the engine to the wheels. But with a car with torque vectoring, you have the ability to control and vary the amount of torque that you're supplying to each of the wheels that have those motors. And this allows the wheels to grip the road better, which means you can increase your handling capabilities, you increase your grip, and overall you have a more stable car. Those motors also provide the car's reverse power as the eight speed dual clutch transmission has no reverse gear. And that lack of a dedicated reverse gear helps the transmission be significantly smaller and 22 pounds lighter. It also has a shifting time 30% faster than the previous Ferrari's dual clutch system. It takes just 200 milliseconds to change the gear. You wanna see how fast 200 milliseconds is? Check this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's this fast. I bet you're noticing that I'm not wearing shoes right now. <laughs> 
I have a, I have a Florida shirt on. I'm not wearing shoes. Gosh, dang it. I'm not setting a good example. Now the third motor sits between the transmission and the combustion engine. And all together, these three electric motors add 217 horsepower to the drivetrain. Together, the electric motors and the turbocharged combustion engine deliver an amazing 986 horsepower. This car stores its power via a 7.9 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, which is also capable of being recharged via regenerative braking. We already talked about that. Now for those of you who might not have any context to what a kilowatt hour is, it's just a measure of the amount of energy capacity a battery has. Now energy is just power times time. And power is a measure of the instantaneous electricity being used. And we use watts as a unit of measure power. Now kilo means a thousand, so a kilowatt is a thousand watts. And all this means is that the SF90's lithium ion battery can produce 7,900 watts of power for one hour. Now Tesla Model X uses a hundred kilowatt hour battery, but that's its main power source, so it has to be there. But the SF90 is right there in line with its Prius Bro Bro, which has a, like I said before, 8.8 .8 kilowatt hour battery. The Ferrari SF90 is more Prius than Ferrari. Dare I say it? And for the first time ever, you can even run a Ferrari in purely electric mode. Now with a range of 16 miles and speeds up to 84 miles per hour, which really isn't all that impressive, but you effectively have a front wheel drive electric Ferrari. Now I'm sure that's something the founder Enzo Ferrari never thought that his company would produce. Enzo Ferrari is for sure spinning in his grave, screaming up, Yo marafaras, yo marafaras, I should have never died. Actually, he shouldn't be that upset. Well, not yet at least, because the hybrid system is only half of the SF90 equation. The other half is the twin turbo V8 setup. Oh no, a V12, I should have never died. Now the main unit delivering power to the wheels in the SF90 is a four liter twin turbocharged variant of Ferrari's F154 V8. Now this is the first turbocharged Ferrari road engine since they put a turb altered engine in the legendary Ferrari F40. But it's not solely in the SF90. It's actually been fitted in the 488 and the F8 models since its creation. But in the case of the SF90, it's been bored from 3.8 liters to 4 liters and some changes have been made to allow for the cohesion between it and the hybrid system. You know that engine's got to play nice with the electric motors, so they got to do some fancy work. Hi, welcome to Jerry's Auto Sales. You're interested in SF90? No problemo. Let me give you some of the specs because I got spec. You're a spec guy? Cool. I'm a spec guy too. Okay. We got forced induction, comes from two parallel twin scroll water cooled turbos, two intercoolers. Great. You like that? You want more specs? Cool. It's got four valves per cylinder, 32 valves total. Oh, you want to know what kind of crank it's got? It's got a flat plank crank. It's got a dry sump oil system. It's got two can shafts with continuously variable valve timing on the intake and exhaust. Oh, you want more? Oh, you want some more? Well, too bad, because that's it. Paragraph's over. Now, we talked about VVT in the Viper episode, greatest car ever to come out of America. So if you want to know more about that, go watch after you finish this episode. The Ferrari's twin turbo V8 is really an incredible piece of engineering on its own. With no form of hybridization, it'll produce 780 horsepower. To put that into context, a Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat, which we love here at Donut, that has 717 horsepower, and it's considered by most to be one of the most potent cars ever built. Now the Ferrari's V8 has that thing beat even before we get into the hybrid system. But what's even more interesting is not how, but why Ferrari decided to give the SF90 a twin turbo. Well, at the time when Ferrari launched their 458 all the way back in 2010, they used a naturally aspirated V8, believing that this was the most efficient way to create power. And they thought so because at the time in Formula One, the engines being used were naturally aspirated V8s. That's the whole point of F1 build stuff, you build race cars, and then you put that technology into your road going cars. So if F1 team's doing it, you do it. However, the following year, McLaren, still a relative newcomer to the road car production scene, launched the MP4-12C. 
like Ferrari's flagship car, the McLaren was a mid-engine, rear-wheel drive supercar. But while the Ferrari had a high displacement, naturally aspirated V8, the McLaren had a far smaller 3.8 liter V8 with twin turbs. It produced more horsepower, more torque, and was more economical. Five years later, that's a lifetime, Ferrari took a page out of the McLaren book and used a smaller displacement twin turbocharged engine in their 488. Now what I'm getting at is that this is a pattern Ferrari had been falling into for the past few decades. They make amazing cars, but sometimes they hold on to that aging technology for far too long while their competitors innovate and reinvent and they take more risk and oftentimes they yield better results and more future-proofed performance. And if you look back at the supercars from each decade that really stand out though, you'll see that the majority of them are Ferraris. Starting in the 50s and the 60s, the Ferrari V12 250 GTO was and remains the most sought after car ever built. You got the 288 GTO, the F40, the Enzo, the LaFerrari. It's the same story. Now Ferrari aren't often the pioneers of new road car technology. That accolade tends in more recent times at least to be awarded to McLaren or Porsche. But when they do decide to do something, boy oh boy, do they do it well. And this is exactly what they have done with the SF90 Stradale. But where do we go from here? I mean, it looks like history will repeat itself. Ferrari's head of marketing, Enrico Galleria, basically said that, hey, battery technology, it's not there yet. It's not up to the Ferrari standard. In order for us to build a Ferrari that's purely electric, that technology's gotta be a little bit improved. We're not ruling it out. We're saying, hey, we're gonna build an all-electric Ferrari, just not yet. There's, guys, there's gonna be a day when only electric Ferraris are gonna be zipping around a racetrack. And instead of V8s and V12s, all you're gonna hear is <laughs> buzzing by. But it doesn't even matter, because the best Ferrari ever has already been built, the F40. And if you don't think so, go watch this episode of Up to Speed and then come back here and tell me otherwise. And if you can't, I'll give you one of my dirt bikes. Follow me on Instagram at Jeremiah Burton. Send me your address, I'll ship it to you. But you're not gonna be able to because the, the freaking F40 is the best car ever. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye for now.